Howdy right, folks, welcome back to 15 Nautical Mile Arc. We are in Japan today. We are going to do a flyby of Mount Fuji. And we are in x 11.10, as we will be forever in the future. I'm looking at that. Um, right above the tail of the aircraft, there is a warship that is going across the water. Anyway, we are in Japan. We are going to do a flyby of Mount Fuji because this is HD Mesh version 4 that came out pretty much the same exact day that X-Plane 11.10 came out. So it's been like a double Christmas here for X-Plane Sims and, or Simmers I should say, and I'm enjoying the incredibly high frame rates I have. Now, I was doing some tests off camera. I actually recorded an episode that I decided to scrap where I did tests among default mesh, HD3 mesh, and HD4 mesh to see the performance hit and HD4 mesh does give a performance hit. I do lose some frames. However, I lose fewer frames than I did with HD3. Um, however, the OSM data in HD3 is older than the default mesh. So in a way, default is better than HD3. However, there are some goodies with HD3. I don't know, HD3 mesh, version, HD version 3 mesh is obsolete at this point. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up that I don't have as bad of a performance with HD Mesh version 4. Now I haven't decided though if I'm going to use HD version 4 or default for most of my flights because HD version 4 is way bigger file sizes than 3. Um, HD version 3 would be between 500 megs to 1.2 gigs per area. HD version 4 is about 1 gig and up from there. So they are bigger file sizes. Um, I don't know. I haven't decided. Maybe it'll be, depending where I'm flying, I'll go default mesh. Sometimes I'll do HD4 mesh. But because we're in Japan and because we're going to fly by Mount Fuji, I wanted to use HD mesh version 4 to see how wonderful this can look with an easy to install freeware add-on being the HD mesh. So um, you can Google it if you want links to it and you just create a folder and then dump it in there, dump in each region and then you have to go to your scenery I and I and rearrange a few things but it's no big deal. Um, if you're looking to do this type of thing you probably already know all that stuff anyway. But if not, ask me. Maybe I can do a tutorial or I can just do some Googling. But anyway, we are in Japan, and that is a long introduction as usual. I'm going to fly by Mount Fuji, which I've said three times. And we are in the Let L410 again. This amazing freeware at the time of this recording aircraft. It's on the road to becoming payware. Don't know when that is. If you're watching this in the future, it might already be payware. I don't know. If you're watching it while it's being uploaded, it's freeware. Grab it for yourself. It has been so far working perfectly fine in X-Plane 11. Today will be our first test, though, for this aircraft in X-Plane 11.10. I did practice this flight, and it went quite well, but that was 11.05. So we will see how this works. Anyway, I'm just enjoying the frame rates. That's why I'm moving around so much, and I'm enjoying the new autogen, um, the new OSM data, all kinds of new stuff. It's very, very lovely. This is not a modeled airport, which is why I haven't swung around to the other side. As you can see, there's nothing to see here. But that being said, where in the world, no pun intended, are we? We are south, southeast of Tokyo at Camp Kasarazu. Ka you know, let's try that again. Camp Kisarazu. Romeo Juliet Tango Kilo. And we're going to take off runway 20. And we are going to follow GPS. We have a few waypoints. We are taking actual airways. And it is going to take us right next to Mount Fuji following an actual airway. So that's pretty cool. And then on the way in after waypoint Golden, we are going to break and have to go visual because there is no instrument approach to our destination airport. Romeo Juliet and... November <laughs> Yankee, which is pronounced Shizuhama. That's where we're landing. Runway 27 there. Um, there is an NDB, but it's just to get you there. So 
during my practice flight, I let GPS take us over the airfield and I did a left traffic pattern. And I lost that runway when I was over the water and I landed, but it was disastrous and unrealistic. So we, for this trip, are going to break visual when we get to the shoreline in that area and see if we can land that way. Um, I don't sound very confident because I'm not confident. But we will try. We're going to cruise at 11,000 feet. Um, because of the GPS being the 430, our visual calculation, visual, our vertical descent calculation is going to be a little bit different than in the 530. Um, yeah, that is it. We will see how this goes. I'm getting kind of nervous now that I'm recording this, but we'll see how this works out. Um, the first thing we need to do is hop inside and make sure the parking brake is set. I can't remember where it is on here. Oh, that's right. If you look at our pressure when it's engaged, the pneumatics pop up, and that's how you know your parking brake is set. Battery on. Forgive me. I have to remember how to start this because I was just flying the beach craft a lot. There's our battery there. Beacon light. Beacon light. There it is. Position light right next to it. Checking fuel. Let's um, check our fuel. Weight and balance. We have an hour and 14 minutes flight time. That is plenty. It's a very short flight. No, it isn't. I can't remember how long the flight time is. But um, good enough. We do have clear skies because I want to see the mountain. I do not have real world weather turned on or we wouldn't see the mountain. I guess we'd see the peak of it above the clouds. But um, I want to be able to see the mesh, the HD version 4 mesh. IELU both on and always is on. Not sure what's on the checklist. Um, where's my quadrant? Let's reset all of this stuff. There we go. Fuel tank pumps on that i believe is up here somewhere and they already are on okay all right let's start this engine so fuel mixture on engine starting on that should be all we need to do and let's let go and it's starting good now we got to find the right generators which are somewhere up here right generators both turn on good come back down here shut the left engine sounds good close this cover generators left on let's hop over here and make sure everything is stable in the middle and what gauges am i looking for here inverters where are those things over here on there we go nav and all that stuff on all of this there we go avionics um did i catch avionics i didn't see avionics up here let me just check i'm gonna turn all these on well there's some of them are modeled turn all these on anyway still don't see an actual avionics switch Generator, battery, inverters, all this stuff, unless that's what means by avionics. Starting doesn't matter. It already did. Oops, I skipped those switches. Oopsies. That's what that means. Starting. Okay. Um, nothing there. I don't see avionics. It's on my list, though. And the avionics are on. So that must be what that meant was up there. Engine starting. Turn off, which I never turned them on, but I would turn those off now. Cross feed on. And then radio navigation, which I already did. Come down. Whoa. Where's my preset for that? There we go. There it is. Um, it is time to enter the flight plan now. So let me actually get closer to this thing. There we go. Not there we go. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm getting dizzy. All right, let me quickly remind myself how to use this thing. Oh, I remember, you can't use it in here. You have to pop it out. That's why I don't have a preset for it. See, there we go, it's all coming back to me. All right, flight plan, which might actually already be in there from my practice flight. Uh, flight plan, menu, so this one, delete flight plan, enter. Good, okay. Push that and then outside one. 
Yes, okay, so that's where we're starting from. Our first waypoint is Hojo, if I can remember how this thing works. For the most part, this is exactly like the 530. At least the way we're going to use it, it is. There is one thing we have to do differently, though, and that's when we calculate our vertical descent profile. There is one thing I skipped right past Jade, didn't I? There is one thing we have to do manually, and I'll talk about that when the time comes. Let's just get this in here. There we go. Hosio Act Accept. Next waypoint, Goten. Just like so. Um, intersection. Yes, it is an intersection. And then we're going to put the airport in, which again is Romeo. Juliet, November Yankee. Just like that. But we're going to break free at some point. Um, so we can use this to tell us where we are. Or if you do the right thing, somehow you can get to your map. There we go. I want the other map, though. There's a vertical descent, by the way. Hmm. I thought there was the other map type in here. Well, whatever. We'll just do the north is up instead of heading up. Uh, let's not worry about the message right now. Let's switch that to GPS and then pop it back in. Actually, let's zoom out a second. All right. See, it's a short flight. Pop that back in. We'll talk about the vertical descent thing and how it's different on the 430 in a moment. Oh, lights, piece of cake. What is next on our checklist? All right. Taxi lights will come on. Which, where do those things go? There, it's up. There we go. And Pytot, he's on the co-pilot side, which... Where's my preset for that guy? Oh boy, that's in the way. How do I hide you? I know there's a little click spot. You know, maybe the click spot's on this side. That hides both, okay. Pytot, is over here. Flap set. Where's our flap indicator on this thing? I hear a moving, and I saw the lever, but I don't see the indicator. I have to search for that. I don't have this aircraft as well under my memory as the others. This is only the second time I've flown this thing. Well, third time, including my practice. So, I am a little bit rusty on a few things. I will find that flap indicator. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just over here. Maybe I just have a lever. Maybe there isn't a dial. Anyway... I'm um, setting the time. Let's put this back in. Where did it go? I see you. I see you. Where are you? Click spot. I know you're there. There it is. Nope, not. No time on there. Okay. Um, landing lights. No, we have to get in the runway. Let's get in the runway. And let's move our props forward. Why are they moving so slowly? What's going on? Okay, and just like that. Since I can edit, I finally got these started. Now let's turn these off and see if we stay running. We should, I hope. Yes, and we are. Okay. That made a big difference. So we're going to head out to runway 20. We are facing... What direction are we facing? We're facing 2. So we're going to head out. Head to the left. Head to the right. And then take off. So let's um, use the right preset I made. Put prop forward a little bit. And let's just let this thing guide itself to the end of the runway. There's not much to see here. So I'm just going to jump to the end of the runway. I'll see you in a moment. Alright, we're going to pull up to the runway here. I apologize for the few problems starting. Like I forgot to close the door and I didn't start the engines right. But like I said, this is only second time really... And I've been in this aircraft. So um I have a little bit of a little little bit to learn and get under my fingertips here, so to speak. Let's stop right lined up and set the parking brake again. Then we'll hop inside to make sure everything is good here. End of runway Pytot heat is on. Flaps are set. Actually, let's bring down the other set of flaps. Landing lights can come on now, which are the down ones. There we go. Um, and we had a few things up on our lights here. What is this stuff? Isolation valve, that'll turn off when we go up. Whoops, generators, forgot to turn those on. Let's check that again. 
flaps because we have them down all the way. Search lights is for the landing lights, and isolation valve will turn off when we get going. So let's get going. Autopilot. Do I have a preset for autopilot? I do. There's my autopilot preset. All right. We're going to do nav. And I will hit Alt when we get to 11,000 feet, because I don't see a way to dial in 11,000 feet. Nope, that's DME. So I haven't found a way to dial it in. So I'm just going to hit Alt when we get there. So here we go. Wish me luck. Props forward. Hold the brake. Parking brake off. And let's go without flipping forward on our nose here. Um, I am pretty nervous. Because that startup didn't go so well. Okay, let's go. It took off on its own, which is great. Let's see here. Let's get the first set of flaps in. Let's get the gear in. Second set of flaps in. And um, I can't see my GPS, but I want to get lined up. And then we'll engage autopilot in a moment here. And like I said, we will... Um, Set our altitude when we get to our altitude. Too many things going on at once here. All right, there we go. We're about lined up. Let's engage autopilots. There we go. Now I have to come down here though and set our vertical speed and go up, or else it's going to do some pretty crazy things. There we go. We should be good. Um, I still haven't figured out what the dot two two meant. I thought maybe it meant like 200 or 2,000 feet per minute, and it doesn't. I just adjust it accordingly. So right now, vertical speed is set to 1,000 feet per minute. See? It's holding 1,000 feet per minute, and that translates to dot two zero. I'm not sure why. Um, I'll figure it out someday, though. Well, let's go over here to our engines and bring back some stuff so they don't blow up. Let's get engines out of the yellow and let's get props out of the red come on where's our prop rpm there it is get that out of there we go i'm looking at all my gauges similar to the beach craft there we go green 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 and there's mount fuji straight ahead like i said this is an actual airway now and it's going to bring us right by the mountain and then we get to check out the version 4 mesh as well so that is it. All I need to do now is turn off landing lights at 10,000 feet and come down here and press Alt as soon as we get to our desired altitude because like I said a couple times now, I haven't been able to find a place to dial in our altitude for autopilot. So I am going to set up some views now that I have 20 presets to play with and we'll do some sightseeing. And I really don't have much else to say. It's a very simple flight. We're learning this aircraft together. Um, let's just enjoy some scenery and some awesome frame rate action. Some awesome mesh and an awesome mountain. And you'll hear my voice when it's time to calculate that top of descent.
All right, we're about to hit 11,000 feet. So we're going to come down here and hit Alt right about now. That should hold us off at 11,000 or so if we were close. There we go, right on. Check that out. We did have an autopilot mishap off camera <laughs> during the sightseeing. My dot two zero made us go straight up and we stalled, but we recovered. And um, I just lowered my VS on the autopilot, that's all. And then we climbed about 800 feet per minute after that. But now we're all set. We're still on our GPS track. We're about to get to our first waypoint. And um, we are now level at, what is that? 10,960 feet or so. Let's turn off our landing lights, which already turned themselves off, did they? Nope. Okay, now they're off. Otherwise, this mesh is amazing. It is clearly, clearly much better than the version 3 mesh. I mean, just everywhere we look, it's just spectacular. So, I may end up downloading as much as I can. I'm going to have to compare this to default mesh. But I'm pretty sure this is much, much better than default mesh. I mean, it has to be. Let's back up a little bit here for a screenshot of the mountain. Although that's kind of far away yet from the mountain. But, I mean, just look at this. And our frame rates are still above 20. Of course, you don't have weather turned on. <laughs> our, our next real, wor or real weather flight might destroy everything. But just look back over Tokyo area. How crisp the shorelines are and how realistic they are and why are we turning oh that's because we reached our waypoint I bet yeah okay no need to panic but man like I said this is a real life airway I'm not kidding and look how close we are going to come to that mountain I would imagine you're probably flying at like 30,000 feet though not 11,000 feet but um wow this is incredible let's have a look out the window while we can so nice. More mountains in the distance there. The ocean there. But just look at this. It is so beautiful. But anyway, enough rambling from me. We have everything under control now. We're going to calculate our vertical descent. And then we'll do some more sightseeing. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. No, not that. Um, vertical descent was this. Uh, here we go. Okay, so we want to, let's see. At the airport, what do we want to be? For approach, let's do a thousand for now. Of course, I did that wrong. Um, if I have to circle around, I can. So let's do a thousand feet. Um, let's do a couple miles out from the airport. Let's do five miles out from the airport. The airport being that, right? Yes. You know, you want to do, let's do a thousand foot per minute drop. So what's different between this and the 530? Well, the 530 under this line would tell us how many seconds and minutes and hours. Well, not really hours, more like minutes before our top of descent. But we don't have that line in this. So this VSR, when that gets to a thousand, that's our top of descent. See how it's slowly climbing foot by foot? When that reaches a thousand, that's top of descent. That's all we gotta know for that. Alright, so let's I did it again. I think it's no, how do I get out of this? Oh gall. How do I get out? There we go. Now is it this one? There we go. Alright. So I just push a little inside one to see it when that gets to a thousand. I know we're at top of descent. It's as simple as that. Let's zoom out a little bit. Alright, we're coming up on the mountain. So Wow, I'm just in awe of that mesh. I just, I, I knew it would be good, but I didn't think it would be this good. I mean, look at this. That's incredible. That is worth a 5 to 7 frame loss, frame per second loss. Because that is that good. Look, at, look down below. Look below us. Down there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I gotta, I have to take the time to download for every, every region I fly needs this mesh. That's incredible. Wow. We got the mountain coming up here. 
Well, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to give you some sightseeing to enjoy. And I'll see you soon, I guess. sightseeing in a moment, but um, we totally blew past our top of the set, of course, because I was sightseeing, but it was worth it, so now we gotta catch up. So I'm trying to figure out this autopilot. We seem to be descending at 500 feet, or no, it's meters per second. Five... No, okay, hang on. Is that five meters per second, or 500 meters per second? I can't really tell, because... I don't know what this translates to. Vertical speed times 100, so 10, 100, so 16 something. But see, no matter what I do, no matter what I do, it goes back to 5. It go, it'll go back and forth and settle at 5 no matter what I do. So I'm really not sure what that is doing. Um, but our number is getting smaller on a VSR, so we are coming down. I, uh, I'm not exactly sure. 
So we're just going to come down, I guess. See, it's, there it is. It's going to settle in around 5. 5 meters per second, 50 meters, 500. I don't know. Well, now there's going down to 6 and almost 7. But down here, it's 16, 18. So who knows? I'll figure it out at some point. Um, if you do know, go leave a comment. But chances are, by the time you see this, I've already figured it out after the fact. Uh, we still coming down. Let's slow down here with throttle so that comes down faster on the VSR. Otherwise, we're going to break free soon and just follow the shoreline regardless of what the GPS says. That's the plan anyway because um, there is no instrument approach and I looked all over the place for this. But we're going to pass over an airport there sticking on that peninsula and then we're just going to follow the shoreline to the left until we see the other airport and then at that point we'll use our GPS zoomed in nice and tight. Okay, there are VSR still coming down. That's good. But yeah, no matter what I do down here in autopilot, now we're at 7 meters per second. I guess that would be right, meters per second, if you think of second, not minute. Maybe that is literally 7 meters per second. Not sure what that translates to. I have to do some math and conversions. But otherwise, prepping for descent, we are at 7,000 feet. We better get those landing lights on. What else do we need to do? That's it. Landing speed, 84 knots, which is 155 kilometers per hour. And if we come over here, this gauge is kilometers per hour times 10. So 155 would be one tick past the mark. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 155 would be just past it because that's times 10. So 155 kilometers per hour. That's what we need to see on the dial. Uh, we're still uh, behind schedule here. Let's slow down a little bit more. Hmm. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. At this point, I think we're just going to bring that one up. Let's do a little bit more sightseeing while we can, and then I have to manage this aircraft because we're coming down pretty steep now. But uh, a few more sights. Wow, just look at that mesh. That is insane. And our frame rates are way in the 30s. They have to be close to 40, if not higher. I know I could turn on the data output, but whatever. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is the way to go. Where's the mountain? There it is. A little bit more sightseeing. And then I really have to manage this aircraft. So enjoy. Okay, I wasn't kidding when I said short sightseeing. Um, looking at this, we're 3,500 feet above sea level. What does this say? I'm just curious. Okay, we're just below the profile, so let's decrease our rate of descent a little bit. Like that, I guess. Oh, now we're behind. I don't know. And let's just follow the shoreline. So can we use our heading bug? Where's your heading bug? And switch GPS over to heading. There we go. And let's move out towards C and follow that shoreline a little bit. There we go. I don't think we can see the airport from here anyway. We're just going to realign our GPS to tell us a little bit. Ooh, what's that say? Minimal fuel. That's not a problem. We have plenty of fuel. Oh, it's going to hunt a little bit, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's okay. Right landing checklist. Flaps were way too fast and early for flaps. Too early for gear. Landing speed, 155 kilometers an hour, like I already said. So, not much to say. We just have to manage our systems. So, that's what I'm going to do. And 
I'll chat with you in a moment. And autopilot is coming off. Bringing back the throttle a little bit here. Still don't know where the airport is, but I know we're getting close because our GPS says so. And I recognize the area from my practice flight. But um, we've gotten visual now because, well, we went visual when we broke free from the GPS. Because there's no instrument approach. I think that's it up there. Take out the binoculars. Yep, right there. I was right. Alright, let's get ready for landing. Let's slow this puppy down. Gear down. Does it tell us our flap schedule over here? Um, no. It just gives a knots to, knots to kilometers conversion. Flaps down. Props. Forward. Where did our runway go? I lost track of the runway. Oh, there it is. It might be a little high yet. Second set of flaps down. We got to speed up though. We're supposed to land at 155. We're only at 200. But we also got to get down. Now this has spoilers. Let's let them out. Are they working? Should be a thing that says spoilers. There it is right there in the middle. Spoilers. Nice. It's not really spoiling much. We're at our landing speed. Let's get some more throttle going. We also want to come down. Gear down, flaps down, lights are on. Spoilers are deployed because I'm way too high. Let's bring back throttle and come down so we don't get too much speed. And bandy cam is hitting an hour, so it's going to stutter a little bit. Always seems to happen when we're doing an approach. All right. Still at 100, 164 knots now. So we're at our landing speed, but whatever. Throttle's coming in. We got to get down in a hurry, even with spoilers all the way out. Let's just look at that mesh. I just, I'm having a hard time landing because I'm looking at the scenery so much. And our frame rates aren't affected at all. The stuttering you see is in my recording software hitting an hour. Like I said, I don't know why it does that. Let's bring the spoilers in now. There we go. We're still too high. Well, we're at our landing speed. It seems like we're always at our landing speed, no matter what I do with the throttles. It seems a little fast, but that's what it said. 155, we're at 160. Oh, here we go. Now it's reacting. All right, these trees seem kind of high because we're going to clip them even though we're too high on the pappy. Let's just clip the trees. We're at our landing speed. That's what it says. Now we're a little fast. That's okay. I'm going to use this runway. This thing will stop on a dime. Okay, here we go. 30. go uh oh cross so, um why are we drifting left there we go i only have one wheel down there we go nose wheel gently reversers brakes not sure why we drifted left of center um it was a very very soft touchdown though but it was at the last second, we just got sucked to the left. Not sure what that meant. Uh, flaps coming in now. We'll just find our way off of here. I don't know if this is modeled or anything. Let's just slow down and hop outside. Mm, might just be a 2D airport. Hmm, we'll check the replay in a minute. The touchdown was very soft. But at the very last second, we got sucked to the left for some reason. Oh, this thing just... Bleh. Hard brakes. Hmm. Oh my gosh, this frame rate. I love these high frame rates. We're going to stop here, though. Just like that. Is that the parking brake? And let's check out that landing, see what happened there. Alright, so we were never lined up great. 
at all because for some reason I have a desire to live in England and go down the left side of the road. But all of a sudden right here, see we just went left, see that? And then I'm banking right, try to get back, touch off the right wheel softly, kind of like a crosswind landing. So if that were a crosswind landing, that would have been nice, but the winds aren't turned on, so it wasn't crosswind. I'm not sure what happened. Weird. Let's look at that from the side, though. Coming down way left to center. Nice, soft touchdown, though. Right wheel first. I did that on purpose. There we go. And then nose wheel down. Not bad. Very smooth. I don't know why we're so left to center. <laughs> Whatever. I don't have an excuse. I can make up an excuse. But... The fact I was able to touch down the right main gear on purpose like that to get over to the right before touching down the left, that was intentional. I'll take credit for that. I did that on purpose. But um, I have a lot of work to do yet on these landings. Ever since x 11, I haven't had a single good landing. I greased them all, nailed them all on x 10, but x 11 has been a new animal for me. And um, I have a long ways to go. But all I can do is practice and practice with you all. Let's head back to real time and button this thing up. All right, we're back in real time. What do we need to do? Let's hop inside and turn off the landing lights. Turn on the taxi lights. Flaps are already in. Looking at the checklist, checking the time. No cabin lights to control on this one. So let's just um, let's just taxi away here somewhere. I don't think it's a modeled airport. So we'll just find a place to park this thing. Let's just go here. Bring the props back. And slow down. Ooh, that hard braking. And let's try not to run over a light. And we'll just park off the taxiway here. Get that wing off as well. There we go. Set the parking brake. Come up here and turn off the taxi lights. And turn off the fuel. And what else do we need to do? Parking brake, taxi lights, overhead panel, everything comes off. Everything comes off, it says on the checklist. So we're just going to go through here and clicky, 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 everything. Fuel pumps off, all this off. This stuff can come off. All the nav can come off. And the battery can come off. Generators, yada, yada, yada. Come back here. Is it this one? No, it's this one. There we go. Open up the door. Pilot has to open up the door in this aircraft to come out. And there we go. Welcome to where did I say we were? Shizuhama. Shizuhama. Just outside of Tokyo. Just beyond Mount Fuji. And we also went over Mount Ashitaka. And Mount Hakore. Or Hakor. Something like that. Anyway, welcome. Welcome back to the Let L410 as well. I already apologize for our shaky startup of this thing. And I greatly apologize for our strange landing. That had a lot of good parts to it. But the bad outweighed the good, unfortunately. And like I said, I already, I already said I have a long way to go. Getting my landings a little better, or a lot better. But that being said, we, I believe, are back in the beach for our next leg of the Transcontinental Series in the next video. Until then, you'll just have to wait and see. I'll catch you on the next one.